And, and they're looking at hiring four or 5,000 more people. So those are the things that, you know, we can spike the football with and say how great of an idea it was to do it. But in the end, uh, it, it, it is. It's, human nature is to look at the worst part of everything, to see, well, this didn't work out, that didn't work out. I am a positive guy, and I like looking at things that didn't work out. And I would say overwhelmingly, the investment we, we made and all voted for that we've done with e, with eWib, the, the Workforce Development Boards, uh, being a guy that runs a manufacturing plant right here in Groton, Connecticut, I know the value of getting people walking in the door that already are ready to, to walk with you. Not, not someone you have to pick up and lift and carry, but someone that can walk with us. And we were all excited to support those bills. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I would just like to say, too, for all of you, um, you know, I would encourage you to sign up for our all of us have weekly email blasts. You have to go to our websites and sign up for it. But I would encourage you to do that. And I would say to you, you know, when you see positive stuff that you're happy about, just a quick email. Hey, great job, or I'm really interested in this. I'm happy about it. For the most part, when we get an email, it's somebody's not happy about something. So when they say, well, you know, if I get 50 emails, then that changes the story. But I always say, well, I want to hear who I'm not hearing from too late. So we want to hear both sides of the story. Yeah. So I think we have an email really, sign up right yeah, over there. That we're we're all going to share. Yeah. So if you're not getting everyone's email, you can sign up for that. Yeah, you can sign up for them. But I mean, we send out stuff throughout every single week. We send out stuff during session um, that says what's coming up. Let us know what you're interested in. Or, you know, hey, great job on that one. I got a few great jobs. I'm sure all of us did, yeah. right, when we passed some of those. My, my mother and father told me great job. Yeah, my <laughs> mother, good, good, good. Yeah, no one so, but I would say the four of us are very positive when we're up there, and we don't engage in that negativity. And I would say the House Dems as a whole, we try not to get into that negative sort of um, action. So, um, you know, we... Yeah. It's, it's, a long, it's a long road. Uh, oh, Anthony. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, Anthony. Go ahead. Um, if you know things that are going on in, in the community that you live in, um, and, and you might not think that we know, uh, please let us know so we can celebrate that right. event or that positive thing. If you know someone who's been in business for 40 plus years, um, we do spotlights 
on our pages. We go visit them. We give citations to people. You know, we like to promote positivity and, and great things in our community. So if you don't think that we're recognizing somebody and you let us know, we will go and recognize that person. We will try and bring the gleam uh, when people try and say things that try and make you frown. Um, we, will try, we will try our best to break that, you know, because that is something that, you know, we believe uh, that is, is a better thing to make Connecticut better, not only our, our cities, but Connecticut on the whole. And that's the only way for us to go out there and reach um, those who might not think that we recognize or we see what they're doing. We need other eyes sometimes because it's hard for us to always get to everybody um, for a positive thing. Two local businesses that I was dealing with, that I was working on bills for, that they found an area of the law that was stifling their business and asked, can you help? I think our, our beer bill, Beard, and our other um, our other brewers were very loud about what they needed in bills to help. And after three years, we were able to get that bill through, which helped a lot of our small businesses. And they were very much, not only appreciative, but very vocal about their appreciation for those bills to come through. Um, another, our local co-ops, Fiddleheads, did ask for a, a law change to help co-ops, and the people at Fiddleheads, not only the management, but the customers have been very vocal about their thanks. That bill made it through in one session, which is almost remarkable that a major law change happened very quickly. Um, so when we hear that people not only are growing, but if someone finds that they're having difficulty in the law, we try to catch all things we can. But we can only do so much, and if you notice that there's a difficulty affecting your business in the law, reach out to us so we can start to, to work on those problems. We've got a question at that table, the, the striped shirt, and then in your next, sir. So I, I guess I, I would just ask along the lines of what Nick had, had said, and uh, going back to the budget questions of, of revenues and that, it's very easy in this day and age of CNN, of Fox News, of everything to get quick information and not look at a long-term solution. Um, you're challenged with getting a long-term solution for our budget issues and for what's going on and for the revenues where you have to modify every quarter uh, and, and make some balance. Is there a, uh, an avenue, and, and maybe it's your newsletters and that, that you're using to try and help educate and how can we feedback things that we're seeing that are concerns, and, and how do you encourage your constituents and us to not get overly out in front of things before you <coughs> get out there? Um, um, how, can, how can we interface with you better to make sure that's addressed? First of all, I've been in government for almost 12 to 13 years now, and I started at the RTM right in this room in council. The one thing I have realized, and it be, might be painstakingly slow, but we're, we are a cruise ship. Our government is a cruise ship and we go in a slow, slow direction. When we make corrections, like we, since 1960, we weren't paying our pensions and paying our folks up to the level we should have been paying. And we're dealing with those now, but because we're not a jet ski or a small boat, we can't turn right around and make everything better in two seconds. We're making small, tiny adjustments that sometimes seem painstakingly slow. And I even got in trouble for saying that in one of my interviews with the newspaper because everybody wants those quick, CNN breaking news or Fox breaking news. We want to change it right now, right today. But the reality is we've made a lot of mistakes for a very long time. By, by if you were an 18 year old kid in 1970 and I said, come on in and we're going to pay you uh, this amount of money and you're going to retire in 2010 and that's going to be what your pay is. A lot of people bought into that and they did because we're the state. And but what the problem was, no one was putting the right proper amount of money away. Uh, th this. This problem that I talk about is eating about 30% of our budget currently, uh, and that's why I'm such a toll guy, because you see that in that part of the budget, and we see, we, I call them highway deficits, a $65 billion agreed upon. This is agreed with, with Republicans and both Democrats. The only thing we haven't agreed on is how we pay for it. But it's a $65 billion hole that we have to fill right now. So that's the reason I, you know, those are the types of things that we have to look at and how do we pay for them? How do we move forward? And just to put this in your head, uh, Boston, that we always talk about how great they are and how the economy's doing well, uh, about 15 years ago, they made the decision to put a tunnel under their city. And they made that decision by seeing how much they had to put in and calling the federal government. And the federal government's share of that was about $7 billion. And they paid the other 20% to get it there. So it was about a $9 billion project that a lot of people call foolish, the big dump, the big dig. 
They're digging themselves into a hole. I hated the traffic. Everyone hated the traffic. Everyone hated everything. Now they can stand back and say, look at me now. They planted seeds a long time ago. Health insurance for all. Rate, making sure people making living wages. Making sure the infrastructure was fixed and proper. And Boston was not known for that. Uh, I remember going there. But now you can drive through Boston through a tunnel. And when you go through that tunnel, make sure you pat yourself on the back because you paid for it. <laughs> through tolls and through federal excise tax. Thank you, Connecticut. You've all shared in, in, the, in, the, in the great resurgence of the city we call Boston. Uh, right there, you had a question? Uh, in, in the spirit of positivity, I have to play in the negative account, I'm sure. But <laughs> what I'd like to see um, more of, you guys are here as a united front, but just on one side. I think that it would be very encouraging to see you guys uh, reach out to the other representatives in the area. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see what kind of crowd showed up to that and maybe get solutions that were aligned with everybody. So, and, and so you know, and I think we could all say this, this isn't like your, our team goes in the corner, their team goes in the corner, none of us talk. I, yeah, I wasn't accusing No, no, we really, I mean, we speak with a lot of folks, and they'll say things, again, that we, I totally disagree with on a, on a human level, on a basic level, but there's a lot of stuff that we work on together that has nothing to do with the one issue. And I, I've always said, we, if we're going to walk into a room and Chris and I are going to talk about the two things that we argue the most about, we'll never get anything done. But if we walk in and talk about the 99 things that we, you know, can close a gap on to get, to get a good bill across, that's what we do, and all of us have done that. I think over 90% of the bills in the House, and the Senate is a different creature. Yeah. We shall not speak of. You can ask your senators about it. Those are not us, by choice. Um, but over 90% of the bills in the House are voted on by a, over 90% of the members in the House. So there is great bipartisanship. There were bills I was working on on Judiciary Committee because we do such important criminal civil, civil laws. We do not... While we caucus Democrats and Republicans, the caucus is who is in charge of this bill from the Democrats to, and who's in charge of this bill for the Republicans so these two people can work together and find a solution. That's the, it's the assignment of jobs is most of what we do so that you have your partner from the other side of the aisle to fix these problems. Um, we had, even on one of our, our bills that you would think, you know, the gun bills are very divisive in the state of Connecticut. A, most liberal person on the Democratic side and a most conservative person on the Republican side worked together on the ghost gun bills to try to find as much middle ground as they possibly could on language. So if we can work together on federally divisive topics like guns and immigration, why can't we work together on the budget? Yes. Like why can't we work together on how do we fund our schools? How do we pay for our hospitals? How do we help our sick? If we, if we are working very well on the very divisive issues, we should be able to do better of it. Um, there was a Republican, I had dinner Sunday night with a member of the House on the other side of the aisle, and we had a lovely conversation about family, life, and bills that we're working on together. So there is an awful lot of bipartisanship. In southeastern Connecticut, the four districts that are in a row happen to be held by Democrats. So that's who you kind of have today, but it doesn't mean that we just talk to the four of us. Yeah, all, all of our districts good. touch. The yeah. funny thing, to me is, and being a, a freshman up here, is hearing how people say Republican and Democrats are against each other so much, it's, it's not true. It's just not true. Um, you know, there, there is a, um, a really big cohesiveness up there um, in regards to many bills. Uh, people just feed off of the news sometimes when they write things that are not agreed upon more than things that are agreed upon. Um, so I really believe there's a, a cohesiveness. Um, I just, it, like the gentleman said, you have to speak more of the positive than the negative. And that's something that we all have to work on um, because we let the negativity in some of the news overcome the things that should be the star of the newspaper. So. Any other questions on it? Oh, yep. yeah, I do. Um, so before I ask my question, just want to give folks uh, my background. I'm Terry, uh, city of Groton. I'm a drug development director with Pfizer. Uh, managing clinical trial is a big part of my job. And to do that, everything that we do, we have to get consent from patients, OK? You, you wanted to remove a booger from a patient's nose. You have to get consent, okay? Even though it's no harm. 
<coughs> so with that in the background, I wanted to bring up my question. Yep. That's why I'm here tonight. And I think, Joe, I sent you three, four letters on this, and I understand that you're really busy. <coughs> so I'm really glad that you guys are here. I'm here specifically to talk about SB 16. This is a bill back in January. Um, it was sponsored by Senator Winfield and Representative Elliott. <coughs> this is a bill specifically to stop healthcare provider, medical student, and resident to perform pelvic exam on anesthetized women without consent. That's the word, without consent. I learned about this, and you know what? As a clinical researcher, I was appalled. I was horrified when I find out that things like that could be done to a woman, okay, while waiting for surgery, being unconscious. A physician, okay, the professor physician, could actually take two to four medical students, okay, without consent from the patient. The physician will teach while the medical student will practice pelvic exam on the anesthetized uh, uh, female patients. I was just horrified. I couldn't believe what I read. First, I thought it was fake news. <laughs> so I went in, I spent a couple of weeks, I uh, looked at internet, looked at scientific journals. Uh, this is coming from prestigious journals, okay? Journal of New, uh, New England Journal of Medicine, JAMA, and among other journals, okay? So it's real. I don't know what happened to SB 16. So Representative Nolan so is looking to look up. it up. Because none of us have a real memory of that bill, and I feel like if that bill went before the House floor, that would have been something we remembered. Did, we, did it change yeah. numbers? Did it change numbers? So that's why. So well, so I went online. I looked at the well, Connecticut what Assembly. Committee was what committee was Well, public health. Public health. It, it didn't get voted out of committee. It got uh, a public hearing on February 27th, and it was never voted out of committee. And, and none of us are on public health no. committee. Right? No. Okay. Right. No. So that's why no. we didn't have working okay. knowledge of that bill. So how bills get introduced, which I think might help people understand why this, if you see something like this is an amazing idea, or this is a horrendous idea. Every person has the ability to introduce any bill on any topic that they wish. And I can't tell Representative Rotella or Representative Nolan or Representative Delacruz what to do or what not to do. We all have access and can put whatever we wish in. So some two representatives thought this was a good idea for whatever reason. You strongly disagree. Oh, no, 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 I agree. You agree. The, the bill should should be approved and passed. We got to protect female patients who are unconscious. Oh, so the bill says that we can't we do can't. that to someone who is unconscious. The bill right. is supposed to so stop they need consent. Okay. Okay. okay, they need consent. We didn't quite understand yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know about that. I was watching people's faces and I was like, I think he's no, for it. No, no that's like, yeah, Bill is so, for that. Yeah, so, so, so if you let me give you a little bit yeah. more background. So, but if, so what happens when a bill comes out, it has a public hearing, the chairs of that committee feel that it is a discussion-worthy item, good or bad discussion. So the chairs of that committee felt it was a discussion-worthy item and had a public hearing. So any member of the public can go to the Capitol and talk about it or email, which sometimes it's easier, especially for folks by who live further away, can email in, this is a good idea, this is a bad idea, or this is a bad idea, but if you change this, it could become a good idea, or the other way around. And then it gets voted out of committee. It can get changed along the way. It gets voted out of committee. It has to pass 51%, and all of our committees are House and Senate. We're together on those. So we don't. you don't have to go to two public hearings. It's one public hearing, House and Senate. One committee vote, House and Senate. And then it has to pass the House and the Senate individually as 51% and get signed by the governor. That bill did not make it out of committee. So those of us who don't sit on that committee didn't know anything about it. But you saw the deer in the headlights look, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, because there's a lot of bills that go through. So there were 5,000 bills proposed this year. Okay. And I, none of us know all 5,000 bills. Okay. And so, so that bill needs a little push. 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 
Okay. And, and we it will may be have back it in fashion now. next year. It may have it because it of something. So, so folks, because of what I do, everything that we do, we have to obtain consent. You cannot do something say, to tell somebody everyone to vote who's for unconscious, SB okay? 16. And, and, and put fingers in their vaginas. You just don't do things like that. I was horrified. So folks, if you are not aware of the issues, you should write to Senator Winfield and Representative Elliott. And I think it will be a victory if we can protect those female patients. Um, so, so please. And you know what? I, I don't even know why there was no media coverage. There was nothing. It was, uh, not it, was it was nothing. Absolutely. No, no, no. But with 5,000 bills, I mean, somebody somebody could put a bill in that they, they want to allow orangutans to be able to drive cars and obtain driver's licenses, but we have to answer for them. Because they say, who, what colleague of yours put that bill in? Or, and I'm saying, this is a good bill that you like. But we get, like we answer for every well, bill, whether we knew about it or not. But I'm glad, the fact that you brought that up here and you're, you're actually my constituent, that's something that, that I can say, okay, listen, guys. You know, remember the constituent, this is the bill. Because yeah. yeah. in case you're wondering, in the next session, don't look for, F for SB 16, because that won't be it. Nope. It's yeah. all, it's, it's, it's a bill. House bill. Yeah. House well, bill. because it's 2019 year SB 19. So next year, SB 19 will still exist, but the number gets reused. So when you're looking things up, make sure you're in the calendar year first, okay. and then the bill number. Because okay. they'll all go away come August. All the bills are either signed by the governor or not signed by the governor. And then February, we start again. Everything gets a new number. We all don't get to propose every idea we have. In short session, which is next session, um, the even years are short, short sessions. We start in February, we end in May. Um, we get to propose any idea we wish to the chairs of that committee. And the chairs of that committee then decide what are the committee bills. If it is money, either money spending or money generating, we do get to propose those ideas to our um, leadership. But anything gets proposed on short session, we do not get to just straight propose a bill, we send it to the chairs, and then we all lobby for our ideas. But that is, I'm glad that you're against that <laughs> practice, because I misunderstood you the first time. It was horrifying. It's, it's really bad. It. I so I, and I'm glad I know about it now, because I did not know about it. Yeah. Yeah. So right. I see, and, I see and, let everybody know, nine states, they have already passed legislation to stop that kind of, you know, creepy practice. Uh, a lot of other states, they are working on it. So please, um, yeah, so I to when you, 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 did, you did mention those two senators? They are the sponsors. I, I don't they know the but don't stop with just them. Let more people know. Okay. So you have over 140 151 of us and 36 senators. And 36 senators. We should write to everyone. Everybody. We should let everybody know. For that, that's a, that's a state that's a, issue. That's a state but definitely, issue. In, you are Joe's constituent, but feel free, Joe's constituents, to reach out to all of us, because if the more we know, and a lot of people do a group email, if you feel that it's something that everyone should know about. Okay. Yes. We have computers. And, and we have talk, computers. Very and, easy. And yeah. we talk amongst ourselves, the four of us, all yeah. the time about different issues. Yeah, what are you working on today? What's right. going and on? And every night on the way yeah. home, when we leave there at 2 o'clock in the morning, yeah. we communicate. We communicate. So we, so we know we keep each other. Home. Home. Yep. First of all, so we don't fall asleep on the ride. <laughs> and it's 7, 725 right now. And we're going to go, who are you going to go right up till 730? So I, I'd like to get a couple couple rather fire questions. I think if you guys... There's a money that goes towards, it's not really about tolls, but the money for transportation part of what it is. You mentioned that. You use does, the, that map, does that money have to go to roads, or is it transportation? The reason I say that is that thousands of people come to Rotten every day to go to Pfizer. And zero of them take the train because they can't, because they don't have a train station even though we used to have one of the biggest switching yards between New York and Boston. Yeah. And hey, that's so like, historically, other places have done that. Are we still... We do also. We do also. Yes. We, we do also. Yeah, it's transportation, transportation buses, road with, structure within that area. And yeah. the airports are under yeah. transportation. The good point about that is, and I forgot to mention it earlier, is when, now, when, when folks against the tolls will say, we just have a spending problem because it's $478,000 per road lane mile to do a road in Connecticut, and everywhere else it's $80,000. Uh, and those are numbers, but it's apples and oranges because we include, 
We subsidize Metro North, Shoreline East, uh, train buses that drive from Springfield, the train that goes from Springfield to Harvard. All those lines are subsidized and included in our DOT spending plan and our infrastructure, and not the infrastructure part, but the, 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 the year by year. And so it's just disingenuous for people to say that we spend five times as much money per road mile, because that's not what it is, because other, like New York has the Metro. They, they have their own department that bonds their own money, that does their own projects, they raise all their revenue all through, the through tokens, all their there. workers, our, our, our Metro North, work, our you know, train workers. Are, so that's all covered under a port authority that we don't do in Connecticut. So it's just not fair to, to bring up those kind of numbers and, and actually disingenuous and misleading. For, and, you, and you brought up a good point, I'm glad you mentioned it because that's one of the big hurdles that I see is getting people to think that we're not spending five times as much as other people. And, and to let you know, we spend very little on infrastructure when, when you're comparing us to Boston and New York. Yeah, and we yeah. did open up the train line Hartford to New Haven. A lot of our reps were commuting on the train mm -hmm. line and sharing with us how um, good that was working in their community. Clearly, the nights that we were there till 2 o'clock in the morning, they either had to have an alternative plan, a carpool plan, an Uber <laughs> plan. I, they didn't walk home. So they found a way to get um, home. But that is really helping a lot of folks who live in the Hartford area. We just don't have a reliable train to get to work down by us. Um, but it is, if we can do more with buses, if we can do more with EB workers taking buses, taking transportation, having less cars on these roads, less cars to park, we can all, the greater community, will benefit from more economic and more environmental ways to get back and forth to work. I'm going to do one last question. Bonnie Knoll, my former, my former mate on the council. <laughs> so you know I'm a realtor. Um, what, what, I'd like to know what your position was on the mansion tax. Which one? The mansion tax. Oh, the mansion tax. Well, they, they, they worded it a little craftily. So, so if you were selling it and buying another house in Connecticut, you know, which is a lot of times we never protect our interests, it seems like. But if you were selling it and moving, buying a house in another state, they were going to charge you that tax. Mm -hmm. If you were selling it and buying a house in the same state, you're going to get to keep it. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I, I didn't really look at it a lot. I didn't. No, it was part of the budget, so, which yeah, it, was, it was. It's part of the budget, but is this document, right? Yeah. So when we well, talk about the budget, the, this is the short version. version. That's, that's the really summary. Like, how do you feel about one line in the budget? Our budget is a yes or no vote. I think if the mansion tax was a separate bill, it might not have passed the House and the Senate. It certainly would have passed with a lot more debate. Um, but the mansion tax is, t if your house is valued at two, over two and a half million, you pay a slightly higher tax when you sell it. If you buy another house in the state of Connecticut worth more money or less money, you're able to recoup that tax in the next three years. So if you are, most people, I, well, there are no house. I don't know of any houses in my district that are worth over two and a half million. Doesn't mean they don't exist in other districts or other areas of the state or the areas of our town where Joe represents. Um, but when folks, I think it's really good that they added in the recoup because yeah. a lot of folks I know, if they I, I were agree. selling, yeah. A house like that, they would be downsizing to but a small house. I saw house. something today, not that many in this area, but there, there is one in Long Point, and it had a $100,000 reduction today. And had a, 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 oh, a reduction. A so huge. the, the and thing I think, is, I think it might have something to do with If that. you sell it and you stay in Connecticut, you recoup it. After two, I thought it was three, three years. Three years. Three, three years. I think you can recoup it at two when you have up to three. Right. But, uh, but so you recoup it if you stay in, in Connecticut. And some of the reductions you're seeing in the real estate market, if you look at what happened in New York and Massachusetts, the, the state and local tax exemption that, that was done federally, and what, a lot of the stuff we do up there is in defense of what's happened at, in Washington, D.C. So we have all these folks, now you walk into a house and say, well, the tax on this $2 million house is $40,000, but I can claim it on my federal income tax. When that came off the rolls, it really, it's, it's devastated a lot of the New York markets. And I think that's a, a kind of a way, and again, uh, the governor knows that side of the state better than I do. Uh, we don't have that many houses. As you said, you're a real estate agent, you know that. But it's more of a Greenwich issue, and it might be something that they were doing to try to keep up a limb. Uh, we didn't, again, we didn't get to address it in any, any meaningful way. Uh, didn't go on any board, but that's the way our budget works. And there were a lot of really, really bad bills <clears throat> that didn't get passed. Glad. And there, and there were a lot of great bills that did get passed. <laughs> <laughs>
I did get a text from someone in here and um, you asked me if if we get along so well with the Republicans uh, why didn't you agree on most of the budget we get along it just means we just don't agree <laughs> <laughs> just want to be clear on that uh, we get along with Republicans and you know there's no problem between us it's just we just don't agree on some things I just want to be clear with that because I and I won't pull two out but you know I just wanted to answer that because that, that's a good that's a good answer because yeah, that's a great like, answer. we, we that's leave the perfect. room a lot of time a lot perfect. of people will say things they I'll say something about minimum wage that will actually offend somebody on that other side and I get it mm -hmm. uh, but in the end we talk about other things and other bills yeah. it's okay to be on different sides of issues mm -hmm. it's not okay to not be civil and not and, and like right. I said up there right. we don't see I, I don't I haven't seen a lack of civility amongst any of my colleagues on either side of the aisle um, in fact, it's 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 almost. I didn't realize when you were cheering how offensive that was to other people, and we had a discussion about it in our caucus, and they had a discussion because they celebrated one time, and we did too. And it's like, guys, this is not it's not about celebrating. It's about us all working together and getting something done. And yeah, they they did, they weren't happy with that bill that was meant near and dear to me, but in the end, uh, we have to work together yeah. on another day. So yeah, and someone who you might be on the opposite of one bill. The next five minutes you might be shoulder to shoulder fighting for a completely different topic so absolutely we do need to keep those relationships cordial and it's okay to disagree on policy but when we are agreeable on policy that's when you want everyone to work together especially i would say mostly on our local issues we are shoulder to shoulder um, democrats and republicans on our local issues because we all feel the same way about jobs and making sure that folks are protected. But there are some policy issues that Democrats and Republicans do disagree on, and we can disagree without cursing at each other. We don't have to filibuster. Uh, we can be adults, because that's what we were elected to be, adults in a chamber discussing and voting. Well said. All right. well, thank you guys all for coming out. Thank you.